Hi, I'm Diana Schultz, and I'm a certified building biologist. Building biology is the study of healthy buildings, and that includes indoor air quality, electromagnetic radiation, and healthy building science, design, and renovations. I'm here today with James Halterman, and we're going to have a discussion about doing an actual home assessment and what is involved in that. You'll hear about the health effects, the studies behind that, and some of the more details about what we're going to do today. Well, James, thank you for inviting me to your home today. So I've been doing this work for about eight years now. And I came about uh, building biology through, actually through a feng shui practitioner. But before, before that, I designed and built my own home and found building biology, uh, as I said, through uh, a, a training that I took. And I explored the building biology website and realized that the mission statement and the, the uh, study of healthy buildings and uh, helping people with the healthiness of their homes was so important, I was just bowled over. And I was on the phone the next day and called the institute and said, you know, sign me up. So. I had, that was in 2008, and I have been performing uh, home assessments and doing presentations and taking this information out into the world to share with people because I think everybody needs to know how to have a healthy home. So Building Biology came over from Germany in 1987 by Helmut Zia. He was a German architect and felt that this needed to come over to the United States. Actually, the institute was formed after World War II when they started rebuilding the bombed out buildings and they realized after a period of time they had put in the new carpet and the new paint and the new glues and everything else and they realized that the people started getting sick in these buildings. But the people in the old buildings that hadn't had anything done were not getting sick. So they had a really clear line in the sand to see the difference. That through the health uh, studies that they performed, the Institute for Building Biology was born, and then it was brought over here. The Institute was actually located in Clearwater, Florida for, me for many years, and now it's based in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I'm going to explain to you some things. Now, building biology includes uh, indoor air quality, electromagnetic radiation, healthy building structure, design, furnishings, uh, the products that we bring in our, to our homes. We're looking at all of the things that affect the relationship between our bodies and our built environment. So we're going to focus, we're going to look at you know, some of the things in the, all those, that affect all those factors in your home. And I want to explain electromagnetic radiation in particular because it is something that a lot of people are not really familiar with. And so I want us to be on the same page as we go through your, I'm going to have my meters and you're going to go with me and we're going to, I'll show you where the fields are emanating from and uh, what we find. So now the basic concepts, we're looking at electromagnetic fields in terms of electric fields and magnetic fields and wireless radio frequencies. And they all behave differently and we use different meters to measure them. So electric fields we measure in terms of volts per meter. Now, we think electricity stays on the wires, but it really doesn't. It actually radiates out from the wires. So an electric field can radiate out. A lot of times in a bedroom, it'll be four to six inches from the wall, but sometimes it can come out as far as six feet. Now, magnetic fields come from the flow of current. So, for instance, if you have, like we have a ceiling light on in here, if there was an electric field and a magnetic field, when you have that light on, when you turn the light off, the current stops and the field, magnetic field will go away, but the electric field will still be there because you still have a hot wire. You still have a hot circuit, okay? Now, radio frequencies come from wireless microwave radiation and they are directional so they go from one point source to another uh, for instance from a cell tower to a cell phone or from a, a router to a laptop 
And the good news about radio frequencies is that we can get in the way of them. We can get in the way of that signal and we can block it or reflect it. Now, electric fields, uh, there are different ways of dealing with these things. We, we can have shielded cable, we can turn a breaker off, which doesn't cost anything. Magnetic fields pretty much go through almost everything. And they're much more complicated to deal with. So we, if they're coming from things like wiring errors or, or other sources that we can eliminate or fix, we would much rather do that than have to try to deal with some type of a very expensive shielding project. And again, radio frequencies, we can deal with those in ways that we can, uh, there are shielding materials. Of course, again, we want to eliminate the problem, but there are shielding materials, paints, foils, fabrics, different materials that can shield that plane of space between us and, and that source. And really, our whole strategy here is basically, let's figure out what's going on, let's identify the sources, and then Let's eliminate them if, if at all possible. And if we can't do that, then we want to distance ourselves from those sources and or reduce our exposures. And then the very last resort is shielding, again, because that could be very costly and time consuming and put in a lot of effort. Now, a home, a home uh, assessment, as we're going to be doing here today, is basically to do the, to, uh, as I've described, to do this work uh, to uh, identify the sources. If we have mitigation work that needs to be done afterward, then that would be uh, another service that we, we would uh, help you with. And we can work with electricians or plumbers or carpenters or, or, you know, people that are going to help you to fix the problem. But it just depends on what we find. So I try to think about this in terms of if you were me, what would I do, you know? And I, I want to help you because, you know, I've got my heart in this. I, I get the calls from the people that are actually becoming electrosensitive. And when they go somewhere else and then they come home and then they, they realize that they felt better when they were gone and they come back and they're having the same symptoms again and they're trying to figure this out, they realize, gee whiz, there must be or could be something in my house. It could be an environmental cause that's causing me to feel bad. So they get on the internet and then they start searching around and they find a building biologist like me and we have you know, people all over the United States that are doing this work. So then we get the calls after we do the work that, gee whiz, you know, I feel better, I'm able to sleep, my kids are doing better in school and you know, I mean, or my wife got pregnant finally, we've been working on this for years and couldn't figure out why she couldn't. I mean, these are things that are re reality. This is what's happening and so we're seeing the actual people. We're doing the house calls out there in the field. So I'm going to explain to you about electromagnetic fields uh, based on the electromagnetic spectrum. And the lower frequencies are down here in the lower range and we work our way up into the higher frequencies. Now, these frequencies are measured in hertz, and one hertz is one oscillation of electricity in one second. And our 60 hertz sine wave, which if you looked at this on an oscilloscope or on a, uh, a spectrum analyzer, then you would see these electrical waves. You know, like if you see an EKG at the hospital, you see, you know, those waves. We're electrical beings as well. It just so happens that our bodies are resonating down here below this 60 hertz range. Now, 60 hertz is the actual frequency of all the wiring in our walls and actually all the wiring in our whole entire electric grid in our United States. So it's resonating. It's, it's, it's actually 60 hertz up and down, so it's resonating 120 times a second. So when the frequencies are faster, then they get shorter and faster, and this uh, graph on the right side kind of symbolizes what that would look like as the frequency gets shorter and faster. Now, when we look at this graph, we also see that there's a representation of high tension power lines. Again, the whole grid in the United States is resonating at 60 hertz a second. And because our bodies are, are resonating at these lower frequencies, this actually causes what's called 
uh, entrainment. It's, a, it's like our body pays attention to this frequency, this vibration, and uh, like a tuning fork, tunes into that. This is electrical interference. Well, as we move up the scale, we get into radio waves, which are AM and FM radio, which would be in the kilohertz range. And then we get into the microwave range. Now, this is the range of 800 to 900 megahertz, uh, 1800 to 1900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5, 6 gigahertz, etc., on on up. This is the range that all of our wireless devices are transmitting in and this is a range that is licensed this range this these bands in the spectrum are licensed by the FCC to be able to uh, use these frequency bands so we're having increased volume of use of these bands and different types of modulations now are being created that in fact all of this is man-made this is all man-made. We've never had these frequencies out there going through the air and going through our bodies ever in, in our history. When we move up this scale, we get into, you'll see visible light here. Visible light is a dividing line be between ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. Now, what that means is ionizing is radioactivity. So this is, you know, nuclear power plants, x-rays, uh, even ultraviolet or UV light is actually in the ionizing range. Now, for years, scientists have, no have known that this level of radiation has the ability to break DNA bonds. But back in the 40s and 50s, when they were um, setting up these regulations, they didn't see any of that kind of damage in, in to our bodies down here in these lower ranges. And, and uh, so the regulations were set pretty leniently. In fact, they were set by scientists, not by doctors. So now we have put all of this out there and, we, and the regulations are not actually covering it. In fact, the, the guidelines from the FCC on non-ionizing radiation are based on thermal effects. They're not even based on the non-thermal effects. They're based on what would heat tissue, like in a microwave oven. But we know from the studies that are out there that are showing people are suffering health effects at much lower power density levels that don't, aren't strong enough to heat tissue, but they're definitely strong enough to create health effects. Okay, so this is a chart from the Bioinitiative Report. Now, the Bioinitiative Report was put together in 2007 by Cindy Sage and Dr. David Carpenter and a number of other uh, scientists from around the world. It was a review of all of the current studies on the health effects of electromagnetic radiation, focused on that. In 2012, they updated the study so it actually has, a t and that was updated with new studies since 2007, the total is over 3,800 studies. The science is out there. This is a graph that is a, 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 co a combination of, of all of the studies and the different health effects. Like for instance, this large block right here. Uh, this may be, you know, a thousand out of the 3,800. All those studies were showing RF, which is radio frequency from cell towers, caused fatigue, headaches, and sleeping problems. Okay, so that's at this level of power density right here. This here's uh, the huge, huge number of studies that showed at this level, childhood leukemia was definitely indicated that this was the cause. So you can see there are a variety of fatigue, depression, um, cardiac, heart, muscle, blood pressure, vascular effects, uh, blood-brain barrier breach. Um, you know, people are getting joint pain and muscle problems and skin rashes and hair loss and eye problems and uh, fatigue is the common denominator really. It's usually the first thing that people start to feel and neurological problems, etc. 
over time, they're showing that these disease profiles can actually uh, get worse, and there are indications now that that electromagnetic radiation is a factor in ADHD and autism and Alzheimer's, and uh, it, it's affecting a lot of other diseases. And one of the other reasons is because it's affecting the immune system. And that's what I'm going to show you now in this drawing that I'm going to give you, which is a couple of studies uh, have indicated these, these effects. So if you can imagine a clothesline, and these are the clothes that are hanging on the line. The clothesline itself is representing a low-frequency information-carrying radio wave. And the clothes on the line are representing the packets of data or the pulsed frequencies that are hanging on that line. So this would be the cell phone call, the texting, the video streaming, the email, and these are pulsing in a high frequency. So they're up in the microwave range. Now, not to get too technical, but what, what if you looked at this, this actual pulse on a spectrum analyzer, you wouldn't see this smooth sine wave. You would see a sudden pulse. It would go over and down, up, over, and down. And that is what's slamming our cells. It's not even a natural sine wave. So these pulses, these are pulsed frequencies. This is what is actually uh, the most harmful of all the different transmissions that we're looking at. So now what scientists were able to see, uh, Dr. Martin Paul has done, has put together research that is showing that the, res the um, receptors on the cell, we have something like 20,000 receptors on the surface of every cell. Each one of these has a plus or minus. It has a polarity. And this uh, is what is controlling the information flow from cell to cell. It's controlling the intake uh, an output of, of nutrients. These little receptors, particularly the ones that are controlling calcium, when they are being subjected to this radio frequency, or RF as we call it, they get stuck open and they allow too much calcium into the cell. So this is like a slice of a cell. And so when that happens, it, the calcium is a very important uh, metabolic uh, f uh, controller uh, material, and it actually uh, is uh, important in so many different ways for the metabolism of the cell. And he is saying that this is Dr. Martin Paul, it's P-A-L-L, -L, he is saying that this is really the smoking gun, and it's affecting our immune system. There's a, there are other studies that are showing uh, other effects, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So if you can imagine, here's this cell, and here comes this signal coming through it. This is called a parasympathetic state, parasympathetic, and that's kind of a normal state. When radio frequency goes through the cell, what happens is, and there are lipids and proteins in the membrane, this is not anatomically correct, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it represents what I'm trying to say. Okay, when this signal comes at this cell, what happens is these lipids and proteins get closer together and this cell actually shrinks to protect itself. It, they can see this under the microscope, the whole cell gets smaller. When we try to take in nutrients, organic food, vitamins, supplements, they can't get in the cell. The membrane is actually closed off. It's shut down. If the nutrients can't get in, guess what? The waste products can't get out. The waste products are free radicals. We take antioxidant vitamins to scavenge up free radicals, but they can't get in to do their job. So what will happen is these free radicals will float around and they will attach themselves to naturally occurring bits of DNA and RNA. Those bits are not complete helixes. Just the same, a membrane will form around these uh, free radicals. If this is a constant signal coming at this cell, 
This is called a sympathetic lock, sympathetic state. And if it's constant, it gets into a locked configuration. And then what happens is that if this is an older cell in the last half of its life, this cell membrane will disintegrate. And what's left are these false cells. And this is how people are, get, people are getting brain tumors on the side of the head that they use their phone and not on the side of the head that they don't. That's called an ipsilateral response. Now, if it's a younger cell in the first half of its life, the membrane does not disintegrate but the cell actually replicates into two daughter cells and they come out in this locked configuration and they think that's normal. And then they get stressed even more and you've got unhealthy cells in your body that you're producing and we, we do that process at night. We reproduce all of our cells, I think in six months period of time, all of our cells have totally reproduced. The old ones have sloughed off. So you've got unhealthy cells uh, and your the cell membranes. Um, repair takes place at night. Uh, reproduction of cells, you need rest, you need to um, regenerate, and all of that takes place while you're sleeping. So your immune system kind of kicks off a little bit so that your body can do all of those other things. So as a building biologist, we're looking and at the sleeping area and focusing on that as the most important space of all. Because when you can get a good night's sleep, your body can regenerate and you can deal with the next day a lot better. All right, so this whole thing can be categorized as oxidative stress. So I want to give you a couple other um, visuals here. This is a picture of dark field microscopy. You can see these red blood cells, red blood cells floating down the bloodstream. After five minutes exposure to a mobile phone, cell phone, cordless phone, router, whatever you want to call it, but this was a cell phone in this example, you can see how these red blood cells are clumping together. There's a, uh, another effect where the actual cells, and they're, they're doing it in this picture, you, you can't see they're clumped so close together in that picture, but they'll actually, the red blood cell platelets will stick together and stack like coins. So their surface area is reduced and they can't release oxygen and nutrients and all of that like they would normally do. So our blood, and this is happening, our blood is being affected on ev uh, with everybody. Um, not only the people that are saying they don't quite feel right, or that they've got some symptoms, but every, this is happening to everybody. There's a movie called Resonance, Beings of Frequency, and you can watch it online for free, and uh, I guess two-thirds of the way into the movie, there, and it's very, you know, understandable. Uh, it was made in England, and there are stories about individuals that are feeling these health effects. Uh, and there's some scientific, there's a lot of scientific information in there about um, melatonin. Melatonin is something also that is being prevented from being produced in our bodies by electromagnetic radiation. The actual pineal gland in the brain is not able to produce um, melatonin. We do that in the late, early evening hours so that it can control our REM cycles of sleep. And if we don't have enough melatonin, our bodies are saying, getting the signal it's not time to go to sleep yet. So um, what I was gonna say about the blood cells in that movie, they showed several examples of dark field microscopy where sensitive individuals that have identified that they do have this sensitivity and people that say they don't feel anything at all, they showed their blood and they were doing the exact same thing. There are two other effects that they showed in that movie. One is what's called the bottle cap effect where the actual red blood cell has a corrugated edge. It looks like a bottle cap. And that is a, a, an indication that this is going on, that this shrinkage, it's shrinking uh, and reacting to the frequencies. And then the third effect was a woman that was very electrohypersensitive and 
they showed what happened with her blood and the actual blood cells were just bursting. They were just breaking apart. So those are effects. Also, I wanted to show you this picture. This is a bird's eye view, so from the head down, looking at adults, the adult brain, if you put a cell phone right up against your head, the radiation's gonna go in about a third of the way. A, a teenager is gonna go in about half of the brain, and a child is gonna go in two thirds of the brain because the skull is thinner. So this is radiation, and this is affecting people, so we really caution parents, you know, to not let them, not let their little children play with phones because they're still developing and their brains are growing and this can affect how those brains are maturing. Okay, I have some other resources for you and we can talk about that um, and other uh, information that I normally bring for my clients and what we'll do is, um, I'll show you some meters here just to show you what we're going to actually of things that we're going to do. This is a radio frequency meter, an RF meter. This is a meter that measures electric fields and magnetic fields. Okay, so this is a Gigahertz Solutions radio frequency meter, and it's going to measure radio frequencies from wireless devices. We are bringing in so many new wireless devices into our homes. The Internet of Things is just going crazy with wanting to put wireless transmitters and everything in our homes so that they can talk to each other without human intervention. So this is radiation. And we encourage, you know, reduction in that. We're not here to tell you to get rid of all of your cool connectivity or losing your phone or losing the internet or anything like that. We're here to help people learn how to use their technology more safely. Okay? So when I tell people that, they always <sighs> relax. I saw that in your face too. <laughs> okay. So this, as I said, is a radio frequency meter. Now, I haven't measured anything in this room yet. Uh, distance is your friend. The further away you get from these things, the better. Or I should say, the, the frequencies diminish, the, the wavelengths diminish, uh, the health effects diminish. So we do have some frequencies going on in the building. There's a router in the room or in the building somewhere in the house. And we can, with this antenna, use it directionally so we can point at sources and say, oh, it's coming from this direction and not from this direction. And also, by the sound, we can indicate what the device is. Is it a, is it a router? Is it a cordless phone? Is it a printer? It, you know, we can tell by the sounds. Is, is it cell tower? Uh, etc. There is a website called antennasearch.com that you can go on and you can actually put in any address and it will pull up two maps for you. So you can look at the tower map and you can see where the actual cell towers are located near your home and then you can see the height of the tower and you can see the distance from your home. And then you can click on the icons and actually find out more information about the frequency bands and all that. Then you can look, you can look at the antenna map. Now, the tower map is the actual structures. The antennas are on towers or they're on tops of buildings or on poles or whatever. So there are a lot more of them. And so uh, you can check that out and uh, it's helpful to be able to see what's going on in your, in your neighborhood because then you can you can say okay well now we know there's something in this direction uh, coming at us from this direction it may be shieldable we can't control a cell tower but we can control the things inside our homes all right so this is a um, NFA 1000 meter and we can measure magnetic fields and we're really pretty good on magnetic fields in this spot right now 
It's 0.2 milligauss, which is great. We can put it on electric fields, and we've got some electric fields from the wires around us right now. So we're going to focus on the sleeping area and find out what's going on in your bed and your living and your sleeping area. We're at, we can actually do bed mapping with this, so we could actually print out a graph that'll show red is higher and it will graduate to green so we can see oh there's a high magnetic field you know coming from the clock radio that's sitting next to the bed or from uh, you know the computer that might be sitting there or there may be some wiring errors in the back behind the headboard there might be a magnetic field on those wires and we want to track that down uh, that'll show up on that bed map and then we can print that out. We can also connect these two meters together uh, and we can do, uh, because we have this uh, computer chip in this uh, NFA 1000, we can do data logging and we can actually log radio frequencies onto this chip. So that's really helpful because one of the things that people are concerned about um, would be at the smart meter or the digital power meter on the side of the house. Depending upon the utility that your house is located in, they can program them remotely, but they're, they're different. I travel all over the United States helping people with doing these assessments. So I've seen a lot of different utilities uh, with different brands of, of smart meters. Some utilities will claim that they're not smart meters and then we'll go out and find out that, yeah, they're transmitting wireless so that they don't have to have the meter reader come out. But there's a lot more to it than that, and there's a lot of advantage to the utility to be able to monitor your power every 15 seconds and, or every 30 seconds, and that's basically what they're doing. So we're able to measure and then monitor over, say, 24-hour period of time with these two meters what actually is happening because when we stand there for a while we may get a pulse every two minutes or we may get a pulse every 30 seconds but a lot of times those pulses are beacon signals because smart meters are set up in a mesh network and so they're all in that network all the meters in the network are talking to each other and all the data usage data from each house is going through everybody's homes when we can do this data logging, then we can catch not only all of that activity, but then f sometimes four times a day, sometimes six times a day, there will be an actual data dump. So there will be a large pulse that will come out, and then we can see that. I have people that will call me, they'll say, 3 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. And I every morning, something's waking me up, and it's jerking me, and I don't understand what it is. And we can verify or not, I mean, we could say, no, it's not that, but we can say, okay, here's the 24-hour log on that smart meter, and we can see if that's what's happening. And I've had that. It's been a, we've been able to verify it. So, and then we go into the shielding techniques. So, for instance, if we found that on your smart meter at your house, uh, then there we could use a foil in the wall. We could use paint. We could use fabric. This is a particular shielding fabric that shields um, wireless, and we make bed canopies out of this. So this works really well, and we would get in between the source, as I said, and, uh, and you. If you have sources that are coming from different directions, then it gets more complicated, because any of these shielding materials will actually reflect you know, from this side and then reflect from this side as well. So if you have something inside the house, it's going to bounce back at you. So that's why it's really important to characterize the space, and that's what we do. We help, we're going to help you figure out, you know, what's going on in your home and look for all these different sources and, uh, and then uh, make recommendations. At the end of the day, we're going to have recommendations for you, and you'll know what, what you can do, and you'll have peace of mind because you know what's really good about your house, too. Sound good? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome.